It's Victory's Vision Christian Church, Pastor John Morak and Pastor Nancy Morak. We're here to train and equip you like it says in Ephesians 6. We're pastors, but Pastor John is also a teacher and one of the best in the body of Christ. He'll teach you knowledge that you uh, knowledge of the Word of God so you want to become a doer of it because it will only enhance your life and the life that you once knew, I want people to understand this. And I've said this to people that are friends that are born again and people in our church. Once you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior, um, the old you dies. There, He is no longer, uh, and especially in God's eyes, the life you once knew is gone. In God's eyes, you are now a creation. You are now a son of God. You're back in the position that you were uh, born to be in that Adam threw away for you. Uh, it's not me that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. How can you have faith in the son of God when you don't know what happened at Calvary? When you don't understand the death, burial, and resurrection, when you don't understand what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden, what happened was two trees. They're right up here. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, also the law of sin and death. This is the tree of um, law of life in Christ Jesus, or the tree of life, one and the same. Um, the Mosaic Law, the Ten Commandments, and all that is, an, is to show you that you're under this system, the law of sin and death. It says in Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to those of Jesus Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. I don't know about you, but that's marvelous news. But you need to understand it. And then you need to take hold of it. And then you need to be a doer of it. It will make you a, a very victorious, strong person, especially mentally, in your soul, as your mind, will, and emotions. And most people live out of their feelings and their emotions. I know I was one. So Pastor John's coming now. And he's going to teach you on beware of the naked man. Ooh, the naked man, huh? <laughs> <laughs> As to do with Adam and, uh, and the trees and the laws in the garden. Please listen real closely. Take notes. Also, we have a website, victoriesvision.org. It has PayPal on it so you can give to this ministry. There's rent. There's a uh, boosting of these talks. There's equipment. There is so many expenses when it comes to a ministry, traveling, things like that. And, but you're not just giving to us personally. People miss that. They're, you're giving to the Lord and he sees that. He sees your heart and he'll give back to you a hundredfold return. Amen. And uh, plus you want to give where people are being fed, where you're being fed spiritually and your soul is being fed, that's where you want to give your money. So your financial, because if we give to you spiritually, want you give unto us monetarily. So go there. Also, the most important thing about that website is our teachings. They're on YouTube page. I think there's over 200 of them now. We're growing. And we got a lot of people that come in, especially when we boost. So please go on there. That is for you there, free. And you can, um, and if it doesn't change your whole thinking, change your life, and you want to give, because that's what God wants. He doesn't want you to give out of guilt. He wants you to give because it's been given unto you, the glorious gospel. And here's Pastor John to- Well, thank you, Pastor Nancy. To teach you. A little sharp there, dear. Well, I try. Thank you. Um, you want to pray? Or? Yeah, I'll pray. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Give me the right words to say. Let it be your teaching. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. So let the Holy Spirit use me. I surrender to him in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask also that the people that are listening and do listen afterwards, that their heart can see it and understand this talk what you want to say to them, Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Put your, amen. Put your religion on the shelf. Take hold of this because the Holy Spirit within you, those that are saved, wants it. So God bless and joy. Amen. Well, welcome to Victory's Vision Christian Church. What we want to say today, huh? Today is about, uh, it, it's like a, a second talk, the sequel to uh, the two trees. Two trees in the Garden of Eden. One re represents the law of faith. The other represents works, the law of the natural realm. God had to put those trees in the garden to show mankind or just to show whatever that he was first and it was always first. The spirit realm, the spirit realm, the faith realm. He, with the faith realm, he created everything that exists in the natural realm. So we want to go a little bit further to show you what happened to Adam. He was told, and Adam and Eve, they were told, don't eat the fruit of that tree. The day you eat of that, you shall surely die. Why, Why would they die? Well, number one, God created Adam and Eve in his image and his likeness, male and female, which means they're faith beings. They're always walking by faith. They're not walking by sight. That's what the Bible says. We walk by faith, not by sight. When they ate of that fruit, a change took place in them, in both of them. And that's what we want to talk about. Beware of the naked man. Beware of the naked man. I've done this talk about 10 years ago. It's on, if you go to the YouTube, it's one of the very last talks that you go all the way down, you scroll down. And I wanted to, I didn't have slides at that time, didn't have uh, the uh, PowerPoints that I use. So I want to express it. It's not exactly the same. I try to go a little more in depth so you can understand it a little more. What does it mean, beware of the naked man? Well, they, when they walked first with God, the Bible says they were naked, but they did not feel ashamed. They did not think anything of that. When they ate of the fruit of that tree, that fruit gave them a change. They began to have a new knowledge of walking in the world, walking by life. It changed from living by trusting in God to looking at the natural realm and putting their faith in the natural realm. That's why they begin to see themselves as naked. And they, it, it changed everything. It changed their emotional realm. It changed their relationship with God. It changed everything. That's what we want to talk about. What does that mean? Beware of the naked man. Notice this naked man has a fig leaf in front of him. That fig leaf represents this law, this work, trying to fix something to help your problem. Your problem at that time, theirs was they're seeing themselves naked. So they made fig leaves. Out of fig leaves, they made a loincloth out of that. That's what we try to do. When we run into a problem, most of the time we don't run to God and say, God, your word says, come boldly to the throne of grace for mercy and help in a time of need. We go to our own ability and we try to fix it in our own ability. When God has said, trust me, when you, you are weak, my strength is made perfect in your weakness which means you're going to put your faith on the Lord. I've no, been noticing something lately in my own life and Nancy's life, ours together, is when we look at the problem, it seems to get bigger. We try to fix the problem, it seems to get bigger and worse. But then when we stop a minute, or even more than a minute, and go to the Lord, maybe do communion, and start to worship and praise the Lord. What we're doing is we're turning our sight on the Lord, and we're looking at the Lord and we're asking for his help. We're coming boldly. Boldly means you're not squirming and begging and pleading and crawling and everything and see how unworthy you are. You don't look at that. If you're saved and you're a born again Christian, you're a brand new creation in Christ. You got to put on the new man, which covers any nakedness. Okay, let me start. Who is that naked man that we are to beware of? See this? Mm -hmm. It is a vision. It is a vision we see of ourselves. It's a vision we see of ourselves in Adam. What do I mean by in Adam? Well, when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, all of mankind are 
generations and generations and generations that inherited the same thing that was in Adam. Actually, it's called the conscience. It's the voice of the law. If you don't understand that and you have always been taught that the conscience is the voice of God, the still small voice of God, you need to listen to the talks that I have on the conscience. They're on YouTube. The conscience says this is right and this is wrong. This is right and this is wrong by your actions. And it judges you. How does it judge you? Your conscience will look at you and judge you for your actions. Oh, don't do that. That's right. That's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. What happens when we get to a place that the conscience says that's wrong and you try to fix it your way and you can't fix it and you can't fix it and you can't fix it. What happens? You should go to God. But what we do is because we're fake beings, we condemn ourselves. And being a fake being, you have the ability like God to curse something. And that's what God meant when you shall surely die. It's because you're condemning yourself by faith. Too many of us are just premature death, premature accidents, all that other stuff, because we're condemning ourselves. We're under regrets. We're under all kind of things of that conscience that's saying to us, you should have, would have, could have. You should have, would have, could have. When all we got to do is turn to the Lord, huh? Let me repeat this. It is, what is the naked man? It's that vision that we see of ourselves in Adam. It's viewing ourselves and our circumstances through the knowledge that we inherited from Adam and the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that knowledge to reason and judge. That's what it does. We use that knowledge then to reason out stuff and to judge stuff. Reason. Think about what does reason mean? That means you get a thought in your mind and you weigh this and you weigh that and you weigh this and you weigh that. It's all natural. You're going to come to a limited part of that where you can't fix it. And so what's going to happen when you can't fix it? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, please, won't you help me? Oh, Lord, please, won't you help me? As a Christian, you need to say, Jesus, I'm going into the rest of God. I can't fix it, but I know you can. All things are possible with God, and all things are possible who to him who believes. And what are you going to believe? The problem that you can't fix it and get condemned over it? Or are you going to believe that God has a solution and he can do it? I want to tell you a little story first before I read the rest of this. Paul and Silas in the book of Acts, they cast a demon out of a, a, a girl that was a, like a soothsayer. And the magistrates that owned her, or the people that owned her, went to the magistrates and complained. And so Paul and Silas were arrested and put in jail, and they were put in stocks in jail. And at midnight, they could have complained to each other. They could have blamed each other. They could have said, what do we got to do? How do we get out of here? They could have talked to the jailer and said, please, you know, uh, we could help me, help me. No. What they did, what they did is begin to sing hymns and praises and worship God. What does that show? That shows that they turned their mind off the problem and they put their mind on God, on Jesus, on helping, on getting the help from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror. Thank you, Lord, for amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. I can do all things through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, through Christ. Greater is he that's in me. That's what they were singing. And what happened? Boom, God sent an earthquake, opened all the jail doors and set them free. That's what God wants to do for us at all times. If you will look and turn to the Lord. Let me say this again. Who is that naked man that we're to be aware of? What is it? It is a vision of what we see of ourselves in Adam. It is viewing ourselves and our circumstances through the knowledge that we inherited from Adam and the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh huh. It is using that very knowledge to reason and to judge anything. Look at what I got here. A broken, distorted vision of life. A broken and distorted vision of life will be the end result. That's what you get. See? Distorted vision. And who's doing it? Adam. And you're trying to cover yourself with fig leaves. 
the fall of man. I want to read this. This is out of Genesis. This is all about what happened to Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 13. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Did God really say that? Huh? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God said, Notice she didn't say the tree of life. She said, the tree which is in the midst of the garden, she didn't describe what that tree was, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Well, I don't remember God saying to Adam, don't touch it, but he said, don't eat of it. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in that day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, which is true. A new knowledge will come in, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, what does that prove? The woman saw, that's going under their sight, not by faith, not believing what God said, but going over here. And the woman saw that the tree looked good. She was judging by that tree. The tree looked good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. Hmm? What does that represent? That tree represented... If your works are real good and you're a good person, it looks good. That person's a wise person. Other people will, will judge you that way. Mm -hmm. It looks good to make one wise. She took of the fruit and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. Did they know it before? Yeah. Were they ashamed? No. But now they were ashamed. They knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they, then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Why did they hide themselves? Why? What happened? They walked with God before. They fellowship with God all the time. God didn't condemn them. They didn't condemn themselves. They weren't ashamed to be before God naked. They weren't ashamed. Then the Lord God called to Adam and he said to him, Where are you? You know, that's what God is saying to us today. Where are you? Are you in Adam? Are you walking in the wrong tree? Huh? Where are you? God knew where they were. God knew what they did. And he was trying to point that out to Adam to show Adam and Eve what, he, what they did. So he said, I heard your voice. Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. I heard your voice and I was afraid. Hmm? How many people do you know that are afraid of God? I'm not going to that church. If that church, I go in that church, the, the whole thing will cave in. God, I, I knew he was a, a hard God. He's a very judgmental God. huh? Some religions, they believe that God Almighty is a hard God. They teach that, that he's a hard God. And if you don't believe him, he's going to burn everything in your family. He's going to kill your kids. <clears throat> Remember what he did to Job. You know, he signed the devil on Job. You know, that's not correct. You need to hear our lesson all about Job. What gave the devil power over Job was Job. And it was his faith that the devil used. Job made a statement. The thing I feared most came upon me. All things are possible to what you believe, to whom who believes, all things are possible. His fear opened the door to the enemy. And the enemy took those kids' lives. If you got kids, don't be getting in fear over them. You turn to the Lord and you say, Lord, I praise you that my kids are taught of the Lord, they're wise. In Jesus' name, the seed of the righteous is blessed. That's my confession, my eye kids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord called to them and said, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And what did God say, huh? What did God say to that? And he said, God said, who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were naked? Huh? Huh? Think about that. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? Then the man said, it was the woman whom you, God, gave 
to be with me, she gave me of that fruit and I ate. So what was the big change now here? Number one, they got afraid. They saw something that condemned them and their conscience went to work. They didn't have a conscience before. They didn't get condemned before, but they had it now. Uh huh. So they tried to fix the situation and what they do, hide. I don't want God to see me. I can hide. Anybody can hide from God. You got to be mm, deceived. Just like I said, your vision is distorted. Your mind is distorted with being in the naked man. Mm -hmm. The woman said it was the serpent. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Mm -hmm. The woman deceived me, the serpent deceived me and I ate. You see this? The fruit of the tree, everybody thinks it's an apple. The Bible doesn't say it's an apple. So why did I put that as an apple? Because to tell you, the Bible does not say it was an apple. Hmm? It's symbolic that we say that. We think that. So I'm not going to eat no apples. That's crazy. Uh huh. Another thing, people will say, well, how can fruit make a change in people? Everything you eat can, can affect you because there's DNA in all that stuff. We have every living thing has DNA in it. The DNA that was in that fruit was a special kind of DNA that gave them a new knowledge. In the Bible, in Genesis, it says, then the eyes of both of them were open, just like I read to you. The eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. It says, Genesis 3, 7, then the eyes of both Adam and Eve were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths to try to cover up that nakedness. Are you trying to cover up your problems, fix your problems your own way, and you're limited and it's not working for you? Well, it's time to turn your vision on the Lord. Faith against oneself begins when you're walking in the naked man. Faith against oneself begins to operate because the wrong picture of that naked man knowledge it rules our thoughts. Let me read this again. This is what happens to you when you walk in the natural realm. See what I'm saying? Faith against oneself bring, begins to operate because the wrong picture of that naked man knowledge, it rules our thought life. It rules our thought life. That conscience means it's with knowledge. It's not your mind, but it's together with your mind. And it says, this is right. This is wrong, and you've done wrong, and you've done wrong, and you've done wrong. And what happens? By faith, we believe it, and we use our faith against us. And what happens there? You, you're instituting or starting and beginning death in yourself. I believe it's the start of all disease. Someday, the, the medical community will discover that more and more, how your negative, negative thinking against yourself, you're putting your faith in it. The naked man altered all of mankind. Let me say that again. This naked man concept, it altered all of mankind. The effect of that naked man gave a conscience. That of legalism that shows what is right and what is wrong, good and evil. Let me say that again. The effect of the naked man concept, the legalism, the law, it created legalism in us. It gave us a conscience. Adam and Eve did not have that conscience. Jesus never had that conscience. He didn't need to because he was a faith man. Adam and Eve were faith beings till they ate of that fruit. And then the conscience was revived or it became alive or whatever you want to say about it. They didn't have it before. It wasn't affecting them before. That's why God said, don't eat of it because the day you eat of it, you will condemn yourself and you're a faith being. You're created in the image and likeness of God and you begin to pronounce death on yourself. Hmm? What did Adam do when God questioned him? He said, he blamed, listen to me, he blamed first God for giving him the woman, then he blamed the woman for giving him the fruit. What happened to his own decision? He knew better and he didn't do it. Why? My conscience is judging me. Is that you? Huh? Are you under guilt, regrets? Are you living there in guilt and regrets? Then you're living in a naked man. You're living in him. Why? What does that mean to be naked? It means you don't have any righteousness, any covering from God working for you. You have it. 
if you're a Christian, but it's not working for you because you're not wearing it. Woo. Is that naked man doing your thinking and your seeing? Hmm? This statue is a thinker. Is, your, is that naked man doing your thinking and your seeing? Are you saying this? I'm afraid that I just can't see how things can work out. Pay attention to what I'm saying to you. Pay attention to what I'm saying to you. You say, I can't see it. I can't see it, so I won't believe it. I can't see it, so I won't believe it. I can't see it, so I won't believe it. Hmm? You're believing it because you're seeing it on the inside of your head. You're seeing it and you're believing it. Oh, what am I going to do with my kids? How am I going to handle this with my kids? How am I going to handle this with finances? What about the sickness? What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do? How can I fix it? You fix it by turning the face on the Lord. Start praising the Lord. Start worshiping the Lord. Start seeing who He is. Grab hold of Him and also putting on the robe of righteousness. Stick with me. That naked man makes us totally self-conscious. What? Yeah. I was afraid, so I hid from you, God. And then I blamed you, God. And I blamed the woman. Mm -hmm. I, is this you? I need comfort. So I'm going to go to alcohol. I'm going to go to drugs. I need comfort. Huh? I need comfort. What's wrong with me? Is that what you're saying all the time? What's wrong with me? Pastor John, nothing worked for me. We're stuck here. And what's wrong? What's wrong? What are we doing wrong? Where are we missing it? Where are you're missing it because you're not looking at the Lord and letting yourself be led of the Lord. Huh? Oh, people think they miss it here and miss it there. They're looking at their works. I shouldn't have worked at that. I shouldn't have did that. Oh, I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have did that. And they're letting the judgment of their conscience by looking that. They're giving power to that conscience to judge themselves. And when you're under judgment, you're going to judge everybody around you. You're going to put the blame off you because it hurts. Hmm? Woo! Are you somebody that it's their fault? It's my spouse's fault. They're always doing the wrong thing. Hmm? It's not my fault. It's my friend's fault. It's my kid's fault. They're just so nasty and naughty. It's the naked man working in you. That's why you're judging all the time. You got to stop the naked man. Look at the Lord. Look at his love. What's that going to do? That love of God tells you you have hope. It's always going to work out. It's always going to be okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and he will make your paths straight. Hmm? Acknowledge him in all your ways. I was afraid. Oh, I was afraid. It wasn't going to work. What does that do to your emotions? huh? Negative emotions begin to rule. When you're under the naked man effect, all those emotions, negative emotions, are going to rule your life. Fear is going to rule you. Judgment's going to rule you. Grief, depression, sadness is going to rule you. Why are you full of grief and depression and sadness, huh? Because it's going to rule you. You're walking by the natural man. You're walking by sight on your problems. You're letting your conscience condemn you so bad that you're judged by yourself. And you know who's behind that? The devil, all the time, setting roadblocks and roadblocks and roadblocks and roadblocks. Negative emotions begin to rule. Being in the naked man gives us a bad directions and bad advice. Being in the naked man effect gives us bad directions and bad advice. Adam and Adam hid. Adam and Eve hid because they were afraid. Hmm. When we start listening to that naked man, we start getting naked. When we listen to that naked man, we start getting naked. And when we're naked, all hell begins to break out in our life. When you're walking in that effect, in that effect, I'm telling you, it's not a joke. People will say, oh, naked, uh, no. You know, it's an allegory to show you, you don't have no covering. You don't have, you're just full of shame. That's what it's saying, huh? Because you're carnal. You're, you're walking by your senses so much. Mm -hmm. Your life begins to look like hell. Woo! There are consequences of being in the naked man. Adam and Eve were afraid of God. So they tried to fix it with the fig leaves. Their fear caused them to hide. Their fear caused them to hide. Are you fearful? 
Are you fearful? Is your fear causing you to try to fix it and fix it and fix it and it's not working? Huh? What about your, yourself? Are you trying to fix stuff and it, it don't work? You can't fix it? If so, then you're listening to that naked man. You're trying to look for the fig leaves to cover up your problem and fix your problem. Effects of living under the old naked man. Listen to this. This is scripture. Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. Oh, we got to recognize and give everybody a chance to live the way they want to live. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. Huh? Fits of rage. That's a good one. We see that on the news all the time. Well, they didn't judge that, that cop like this. They didn't do what they're supposed to do. Let's burn down the city. We're going to burn it down. They're walking in the natural man. And you know who's behind it? Slewfoot, the devil himself, laughing and laughing and saying, look at these little pawns that I get to use. Look at these little stooges that they don't know anything because lack of knowledge. They think religion is, I don't want nothing to do. I'm going to live like myself, how myself wants to. I'm going to be a self-made person. Yeah, you're self-made okay. Cracks here and cracks there and broken parts there and broken hearts there, broken mind there. Distorted vision of life. Mm-hmm. What else? The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, said the Apostle Paul, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh huh. How about a government? And a lot of the governments lying like crazy, hiding stuff, stealing stuff, dishonest. The day is going to come. A day of reckoning is going to come. God wants us to stop listening to that naked man. God wants us to be clothed with his clothing. God, listen to me closely. God wants us to be clothed with his clothing. His clothing is his righteousness. And have put on the new spiritual self who is being continually renewed in true knowledge in the image of of him who created the new self. Let me read that to you. Colossians. This is out of the Amplified Bible. Colossians 3.10. Put on the new man, the new spiritual self, who is continually being renewed in true knowledge. In true knowledge. True knowledge. Distorted knowledge. True knowledge. Distorted knowledge. You're being renewed in the knowledge of who you are in Christ and what you are in Christ. And you, to see who you are in Christ. How about this one? Revelation 3.18, tell us, this is what the scripture reads. Listen to me closely. This is what it reads. Tell us to buy gold that has been tried in fire. That's Jesus and the gospel. Let's say that again. Tell us to buy gold that has been tried in fire. All the impurities have been taken out of the gospel. The gospel is the message of life itself. The gospel is the message of there is now no condemnation. The gospel is the message of you got to walk by faith in God's unconditional love and word. you got to walk by it. you got to live by it. you got to not walk by sight. What does that mean, huh? It means tell us to buy gold. There's another scripture that says, what are you building your religious or Christian life with? Wood, hay, or stubble, or gold and silver. The gold and silver is Jesus and the gospel. The wood, hay, and stubble is walking by the natural naked man. Hmm? Which one are you going to walk by? It says, tell us to buy gold that is tried in fire. Jesus and the gospel. And white raiment. The identity of who you are in Christ, in Christ in you. White raiment. What does that mean? That means you're pure. That God looks at you in your holy, blameless, and unaccusable in his sight. Pastor John, I can't be holy, blameless, and unaccusable. Look at my life. I make mistakes here and I make mistakes there. Yeah, that's because you're living over here. You're living in the naked man. And God says it's time to stop. Paul the Apostle says, I know no man after the flesh. I know no one after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And that's what God is saying to all of, all of us. Your personality will change. 
you will lose that curse of the flesh as you look at the Lord and see the love of God. The more you see the love of God, you won't judge people. You won't get into sexual immoral, immorality. You won't get into uh, fits of rage. You know, we're growing in the Lord. And the Lord is trying to put that new image on the inside of us. But, but with the power is in the love of God and understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he who knew no sin took all your sin in his body on the cross that you may be the rightness, righteousness of God Almighty. You got that? Mm-hmm. Victory's vision, that's what we want you to have. We want you to have a victory's vision. God gave me a teaching for myself about 40 years ago. He said, John, you look at yourself and you look at yourself in the natural realm. I want you to put on glasses, grace glasses. You see the cross that it took all your faults and all your mistakes. You see the blood of Jesus that washes you pure, gives you remission of sins, totally wipes it out. It changed my whole life because I saw how God sees me. And that's what God wants to do for you. He wants to use us to teach you how to see yourself the way God sees you. Why don't you put an investment into this ministry so you can have power from God that will change you for the better. Then as you begin to walk in that power and that love, people will see that change and they'll want it. Amen. Pastor Nancy, come on up. I think I'm on fire. I'm going to blow up. <laughs> I know you're on fire. I'm loving it. And you know what? You get this down in your heart and your mind and you'll be on fire too. Uh, I want to say one thing. We met with one of the uh, gentlemen that's in our church, and we've known this gentleman for years and years. And uh, he was talking to us about... It's a whole family. Uh, he was talking to us about how hard what he had been entertaining for years because he went through a divorce and different things that caused a lot of condemnation. And uh, he said that he entertained and lived in a fantasy world. He had created a bad fantasy world for himself. And um, only the word could reel him back in. And so if that's your problem, if you've created a fantasy world to get out of the pressure of look at your life, look what it stands for. You didn't go anywhere, you didn't do anything and uh, you don't lies. have All anything. Lies. It's the voice of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the law of sin and death. Satan is holding you as his hostage. Friend. You need to break free from that Amen. fantasy. You need to rebuke it in your life. You need to take hold of this word. If you have to do double and triple time listening to Pastor John on YouTube one after another, praise the Lord and say who God is says you are That's more right. than a conqueror an overcomer a join heir with jesus the lord gives me a future and a hope because living in that you're not going to have a future and you're not going to have a hope and so you need to break free from that i mean you think it's harmless but it's not and so god wants you to um uh, break free from that. And that's from su for someone or for several people. And that's just because of the hurts and pains in your life. So uh, do you have any other words? Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, you know who's listening right now and who will listen to these talks. I ask in Jesus' name for a word for someone that is listening or is ready to listen or gonna listen that they can see that you know everything about them, everything about them. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray. I see somebody, you're stuck right now in a spot that you think there is no hope, there is no hope. And the Lord is all around you. His word is all around you. You're a child of His. You're not stuck. You're just looking at the wrong picture, the wrong picture. You're letting it stay in your head. Don't let it stay in your head. See what God has for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, touch them. Show them what they have in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> this talk, this teaching is excellent.
but you didn't get everything the first time you heard it. So you need to go when it's up at YouTube, it'll be up there in the next couple days. Please re-listen to it, re-listen to it and take hold of it for yourself. Um, we love you. We have three books for sale. Let me show them. Take it first for health is on condemnation. 90% of people's illnesses have its start roots in condemnation. The Bible has a lot to say about roots. You know, uh, going back to roots, take, rip out the roots. And so if, if you're in condemnation, which is basically regrets is a big one, shame, humiliation, those are other names. You'll see yourself when you read that. It's an excellent reference book. Uh, emergency faith is on fear. It's when Exodus, on Exodus, when Moses was standing facing the Red Sea and Pharaoh was barreling down. And after all the 10 plagues and the Israelites never even had a hair on their head harmed, and after the Passover lamb and all of that, the only person that wasn't murmuring they were gonna die was Moses. And he was the only one that had faith and God's salvation, and that's exactly what he said. He held up his staff, which was like a scepter of authority, and he said to the people, behold the salvation of the Lord. And the sea opened. Amen. God will always make a way where there is no way, but you've got to stay out of fear. Those are five points there. Learn them, memorize them, say that book out loud. It's short, you can do it. The next one is love. Don't you love love? I love love. The five love. L's of love. <laughs> we, know a, I, we know a young man and uh, young people. <laughs> he's getting, getting ready to get married. He's ready to get married. What a great godly man. And he's so, sweater painted, isn't he? He is. He's so in love. That's what I was with you. I know you still are. <laughs> he's so fun to one. He's so fun to talk to, and he's a good man. And uh, they will have a good life together because we his choices are first Jesus. So uh, that's on the five vows of love for yourself, for a married couple, engaged couple, whatever, sent for $10 a piece. Go to our webpage, it'll tell Oops. you how to get there. And, uh, well, anyways, you, you jotted down that victoriesvision.org, right? We got the victory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's say goodbye. So we love you. Have a great Sunday and have a great rest of the week. We'll see you on Sunday. Love you. Love you. Bye. Amen. Amen.